Okay, welcome everyone. Happy, what's today? Tuesday. Uh, my name is Ken Spiro. I am the president and founder. Oh, if we don't mind muting. Uh, of School Sims, and it is my pleasure um, on behalf of the School Sims team to welcome you all to this webinar um, relating to, uh, yeah, Dave, just move the next slide, to you know dealing with difficult conversations around the parent-teacher conference, and it's going to be a simulation experience. Um, again, welcome, uh, Dave. Next slide. You know, it is it is the, the the job of the educator, the job of the teacher and the administrator, the job in a school at whatever level, uh, it's probably one of the most challenging jobs that we know of. Um, the, the, we, we joke sometimes that the stakeholders, their demands are often so exclusive of each other and that each one can be more irrational, at least perception, perceptively uh, more irrational than the next. And no matter what you do from a decision-making perspective, you could be in trouble, right? Somebody's not gonna like what you do. So how do we get better at that? So we all know that experience is the best teacher, but the school of hard knocks can be rather painful. And in other high stakes industries, we wouldn't put people out into the field. We wouldn't put a pilot in a plane without hours in simulation. You wouldn't put a doctor or a nurse into a um, into a, a, an operating theater or into a patient room without hours in simulation. We wouldn't put our soldiers out into the field without hours in simulation. Why don't we require that? Why don't we make that an option even for our teachers or for our administrators to practice, uh, to get some experience, some safe experience under their belt so that they can actually have a better chance of making the best decision they can and that they can be prepared for the blowback because there's always blowback. So the skills that we look to help develop are on the one hand, good judgment because we need to make the best decisions we can, and yet we need to be resilient because no matter what we do, chances are we're going to need to uh, contend with some negative. And the thing about judgment and resilience is that you really can't teach either of them. The only way we get better at them is through experience. Next slide, Dave. So when we talk about this idea of simulation, which we're going to go through, and many of you know this, those of you who are familiar with us, right? What we're going to do is an online experience in which we're going to put, you're going to play the role of, in this case, a teacher and deal with one of those challenging scenarios dealing with the parent-teacher conference. I know that from my <laughs> raising my children that there were plenty of times I was at a parent-teacher conference where I wish the teacher had spent a little bit more time practicing. And I'm sure, frankly, that the teacher felt that they would have liked to have me have gone through a simulation before I came into the meeting. And you know, the, the, the flexibility of this modality, if you can go to the next slide, Dave, is that this can be used in a variety of ways so when you're doing PD in your schools or in your districts um, or in your university programs, they can be delivered as part of this kind of thing that we're gonna do today synchronously, whether it's in person or online. We can do them asynchronously. You can do them again um, via this kind of video conference or in person, it's all, it doesn't matter because of the opportunity for engagement, the opportunity for coming collectively to deal with contextual issues that there's really not necessarily going to be a right answer, there's a better or worse answer in the moment. And so to have that opportunity to engage collectively and maybe even cross, right? Having parents and teachers have an opportunity to engage in an exercise, that's just a, an opportunity for development, an opportunity for open-ended discussion where they can actually engage in, and grow an appreciation for each other. Again, whether it's peer-to-peer -peer or who knows, those are the kinds of opportunities that, this, that simulations provide. In the next slide. So for those of you who don't know, and you can see more information at our website, schoolsims.com, uh, we have created a library of topics in which these um, online experiences are an option. Uh, and our library contains simulations relating to leadership in schools, uh, relating to teaching, obviously, and also for counselors. So in terms of the, the variety, and this list is constantly growing. And for those of you who participated in our webinar last month, uh, where Dave and I had uh, an opportunity to together um, design a simulation. We'll be showing, we'll be able to share more of that development in the next couple of weeks. So you can actually play a version of what we had collectively developed on screen. The opportunity to design new sims is always something that's an opportunity and that's the way the library continues to grow. The next slide. All the simulations will be talked, jumped over one. 
uh, are aligned with the standards. And so just in case you're curious uh, for the teacher sims, they're aligned to CAPE and in task. Um, and again, we'll cover that in more depth subsequently. But really, the focus of today's program uh, is going to be delivered by our colleague, Dave Versteg, uh, and he is a former superintendent, but he traveled through the ranks. He started off as a teacher and then up through administration and has spent many years um, in the field and more, most recently retired. Uh, but we've had the wonderful benefit of being able to work with him in terms of, 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 of harnessing his expertise and experiences and experience in terms of being able to both design, but also to share with you in the deployment of this simulation. So with that, I will turn it over to Dave and leave you in his hands. Thanks, Ken. I'm going to go right to the School Sims website and start up Parent Teacher Conference. Um, Ken, can you see the sim on the screen? Yep, you're good to go. Good. So folks, uh, as Ken said, um, as I designed this simulation, I was really trying to put the teacher in the in a hot seat situation. And I think that comes across. And I think you'll start to see why in, this is a good simulation for, for teachers to practice, but also for uh, other people, um, um, principals and other administrators to think about, boy, do we really put our teachers in this kind of a situation through a simulation or in a, in a real life situation? And what might we do in a better, in a better kind of role in, in terms of how do I support teachers during conferences or how do we even make conferences? That whole idea of parents and teachers getting together, maybe the only two times they ever see one another during a year and, and make it a more productive um, scenario. So there's a, a few layers to this as we're gonna see. I'm gonna play the simulation in its entirety and, and you're gonna hear what it is and see what it is and get a feel for how it works. Uh, this is a point of view simulation, so you will not see the teacher on the screen, but you will be sitting as you are the teacher. And the parent will be the person who sits in front of you. And then we have eight decision points in this simulation, and you will be asked to make some choices, and we'll have some group discussion around that. Um, and then we also then, um, there's a couple of reflective slides where we're asked to, to say a couple things, and uh, I'm at ask for some participation in that. We're going to type something in the box because... One of the other really good things about the simulation is at the end, you get a scorecard and you get some feedback on what choices you made, what the what the outcomes of those choices were, what the trade-offs were, uh, something that you can either discuss again individually or in a larger group as, a, as part of your professional learning. So with that, um, here is Parent-Teacher Conference. In this simulation, you will be introduced to a real life scenario where you will be presented with challenges and choices. As you interact with a parent during a conference, your path through the simulation will result from the decisions you make, as well as their consequences. At the end of the simulation, you will be provided with specific feedback on the choices you made in a feedback report. We hope this experience will offer you some insight to apply in your practice. And move my screen a little bit so I can hit the next button. Simulation context. You are an experienced middle school teacher, although this is your first year in this district and in this building. The simulation takes place about nine weeks into the school year on one of the drop-in parent-teacher conference nights. The conferences are listed on the school calendar and the principal's office does the promoting and reminding of parents of the dates and times. The conferences are held from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. on two consecutive evenings. There are no appointments necessary to conference with a teacher. All the teachers are available in their classrooms and parents drop in to visit with any or all of their child's teachers, one at a time. So pretty traditional view of conferences here. And again, I know there's some other models behind this and some other ways to do it. Um, which is another thing you could talk about um, as you're using this. So how do you do it? Why do you do it that way? There's advantages and disadvantages, but the, this is the, the model that I was most familiar with in my teaching career as a secondary teacher. And it's the one we chose today, but we'll talk about if it was done differently, do you think there'd be a different outcome? Um, that, that's part of the, the nuances of talking about a simulation. Background. You teach a core content area of middle school and see about 150 students each day. 
you expect to have 30 conferences between the two evening sessions. The principal has communicated with teachers that the basic information to share at conferences is the student's academic performance and any concerns about the student's behavior. As the teacher, you and the school have communicated to parents that a student's academic grades and behavior issues are posted to the online electronic student management system in real time. Parents can check them anytime. You also send a weekly newsletter to all parents via email each week, highlighting the week's learning and previewing next week's learning. The school also encourages parents and teachers to initiate a meeting anytime either party feels a student is falling behind and needs more or different support. Again, pretty traditional um, system here. It's just the interesting fact that some parents just don't think they can talk to teachers until conferences and, and vice versa. And of course, this school is encouraging people to communicate, but I think you're going to find out there, there has not been much communication between the teacher and the parent until this conference, which is about, like we said, nine weeks into the school year. So here we go. In the simulation, please share what information you currently bring to parent-teacher conferences. Also, reflecting on your experience, do parents find that information useful and valuable? How do you know? Okay, so the question again for some reflection is, please share what information you currently bring to parent-teacher conferences. Do parents find that information valuable and how do you know that? So we're gonna make that our first chat. We're gonna ran randomly put you into some chat rooms and I can't find it in this version, just a second. Dave, I can do it if you want me to. Yeah, I've lost my button when I put it in the screen. So, Ryan, please uh, put us in chat uh, uh, into some breakout rooms for two minutes and discuss this question about what do you currently ask your people um, to bring to conferences and do you do parents find that valuable and how do you know or don't know that? Thanks, Brian. anybody like to turn on their mic and share what was talked about in their group um what what any consensus was or where people thought in your group you were at with this question did you repeat your question what what did you talk about in your group for these answers ah we we talked about being bringing the appropriate documents that related to whatever the conference was about. Um, we also talked about um, asking questions. Um, so bringing questions depending on what role you were. So whether or not you're the parent. Um, sometimes administrators have questions too if we're not understanding certain things that may be happening with the child at home or with with health or that kind of thing. So just making sure that we have all the information so that we can address the issue at hand. Thank you. So that's kind of how that would work. You could either, again, do this as an individual and reflect on this question, or if you're doing this as a, as a group um, of staff, you could have that same discussion. And last conference. It's been a long week, but you are almost done with this final round of parent-teacher conferences. Near the end of the second evening of parent-teacher conferences, at approximately 7.45 p.m., conferences are scheduled to conclude at 8 p.m., you're sitting in your classroom after a lull in conferences. Your thoughts about getting home soon are interrupted by the appearance of another parent in the doorway of your classroom. 
It looks like you will have one more conference tonight. You wave the parent in, they sit down and introduce themselves and share the name of their student. Then they continue. Okay, so now we're getting to the crux of the matter. Here comes a parent. It's not very convenient time. You feel a little bit blindsided, but how do you react? I'm sorry it's so late. I, I really wanted to be here to speak with you. I mean, I'd rather not be here at all, and I'd rather not feel like I needed to speak with you, but I do think there are some performance issues that need to be addressed. That seems pretty straightforward. Let's see what happens next. You recognize the name of the student who seems nice, but has not seemed very motivated to learn. How would you begin the conversation? Start by sharing a positive comment about the student. Best to begin on an upbeat note to get things going. Start by calling attention to the short amount of time left for the conference. Get right to the point and get the conference focused on the student. Start by stating that this conference is about helping the parents support their student. This is a helpful way to quickly engage the parent and focus on their role. Start by suggesting that rescheduling a conference may be a good idea due to the time crunch. There are several important items related to this student's performance. It may be best to reschedule at a time that works for the parent. Okay, let's hear what you have to say. So looking at those options, go ahead and vote on this poll whether you think you would choose option choice one, choice two, choice three, or choice four. So here we go. Enter your, your decision. And we'll see what the group thinks. We have about 50 of us online right now. Okay. We've got a lot of consensus. 90% um, of you said, Option one, start by sharing a positive about the student. And so in a simulation, then what happens next is based on which choice we make. So I'm gonna do that right now. And here's what happens. Thank you. And I am aware that my child has many positive qualities that they've developed over the years. But I'd like us to focus on why their performance and motivation have gone down in your class. Can we please try to stay focused on those areas? <laughs> okay. A moment to take a quick internal inventory. How are you feeling after seeing the parent's reaction? How do you think your reaction will frame how you continue to interact with this parent? Okay. Uh, I, I think we saw what this conference is really about which may have been a surprise to you. So what would, what would a typical response do you think be um, after you see this parent's response? How, how, do you, how do you, again, react to this and continue to interact with this parent? That's, that's a really good question to think about because again, this is again, not what you maybe thought it was gonna be, but now we're starting to see what it's really gonna be. And some of these decisions now are gonna be a little more um, nuanced, I'd say. So um, I'm just gonna type in a couple, just so we can move on. Responding to the parent, you acknowledge the parent's concerns and then let them know that you will work to review as much academic and behavior information as possible within the conference time tonight, which can serve as the basis for continued discussion. Before you can go on, you look up and see what you presume to be another parent looking into the classroom and waiting in the doorway. It seems they are there to visit with you before conferences end for the night at 8 p.m. in 10 minutes. So now you have another distraction. You have something that, that's going to keep you from perhaps engaging with this parent the, the way that you should. Um, and it, it's just it, these kinds of things happen in these scenarios all the time. Another email, another phone call. In this case, somebody standing in the doorway, maybe even eavesdropping on what the conversation is. And this is just another opportunity to help 
new teachers in particular, but all teachers remind themselves of how do you, how do you value confidentiality in these open door conferences? And how do you have conversations with people um, when it's just sort of a, a open coming as you go situation? You now feel rushed to complete this conference, which will not serve anyone well. What do you do? Excuse yourself to tell the new parent that you will meet with them, but will need to go beyond 8 p.m. Set expectations now so you don't feel so rushed. Tell the conference parent that time is getting even more limited and urge them to schedule another meeting with you. It just won't work to rush through this meeting. Stay focused on conferencing with the current parent and keep moving. Maybe you won't need the entire time with this parent after all. I'm going to show you another feature to these um, decision points. There's a little I and a circle next to the next to the button. And so for the first one, it says, excuse yourself to tell the new parent what you will that you will meet them, but we'll need to go beyond eight o'clock. And then it says set expectations now so you don't feel so rushed. So each one of these has a bit of con more context to it and a bit of rationale onto why you might want to choose that one. So I'm going to put up a new poll. It's three choices. And let's see what the group thinks we should do. A few more seconds. Okay, let's see what we got. Every uh, choice got votes, which is interesting to see. 60% uh, of you went with the first option, and but 30% went with choice three. So Brian, could you do another breakout room? And let's particularly talk if you were, a, why people chose the first option, but maybe they would change their minds after hearing what some people say about choosing the third option. And you'll have two minutes. Okay, well, that, that was good. So let's choose the one that was most popular. We're gonna excuse yourself and tell the parent that you will meet them, but you will need to go beyond 8 p.m. Seems like the reasonable thing to do, but again, just because you may think it's the right thing to do, doesn't mean that it's gonna go well. And so I think one of the, one of the really interesting things for simulations that help people wrestle with are what do you value? At the core of what this is about, your, your decisions are based on your values and, and, and some things that you're sort of, you know, come to the meeting with. And I think that's going to play out in this situation, but it doesn't mean that it's always going to be the best thing. So let's find out what happened. Not excused. You ask the parent you are meeting with to excuse you while you speak briefly to the parent in the classroom doorway, and they respond with a curt, no, I will not excuse you. This is about my child. Let's please stay focused. Other parents can wait just like I did. Not surprised. <laughs> not surprised. So here we go. Now what happens? You look up to see that the parent who was waiting is no longer there, which has you feeling less rushed. How would you go about sharing academic and behavior information with this parent? You pull up the student's academic performance in your online gradebook and read to the parent a series of scores based on daily work, homework, and tests. Next, you mention any behavior incidents recorded and share additional observations of the student's lack of effort and disinterest in learning. You ask the parent what they wish to learn about their student's academic performance or behavior before sharing your information. Start by eliciting the parent's input. You provide the parent with the academic analysis, examples of student work and other information prepared prior to conferences. You ask the parent to take a few minutes and look over it. When they have done so, you ask what questions they have at this point. You ask the parent to tell you more about their student, what they like about school and don't like about school. 
ask what their students outside of school interests are, and anything else the parent feels would be important for you to know before you share the prepared conference information. Okay, so we have a choice to make here, and let's have a, another poll and see what y'all think about what choice do you think would be the best for this teacher to make at this situation? And we have some more divergent thinking on this question, on this uh, decision than we've had on the, any of the others. Just a couple more seconds. All the choices are getting votes. Okay, so it's pretty close between choice two and choice three, but one in four reason got votes and somebody decided they didn't like any of them and went with choice five, which is great. That's something we can always talk about, what, what went different. So um, let's go with three. And find out what happens. Yes, I understand the data, but my student's attitude towards this class indicates that the instruction needs to be more engaging. From my perspective, improving your performance is the key to improving my child's performance. There it is. It's all about you. It's not about her child. And that's the crux of the matter. And how do we help teachers, any educator, understand that sort of point of view when these difficult conversations start rather than this process that we've gone to? So she finally tells you, it's not, I'm not worried about my kid. I'm worried about you as a teacher. You're, you're doing it all wrong and it's your fault and it's your responsibility. And she's just never going to give up, which is the essence of the, of the sin. It doesn't matter what you decide. She's going to, she's going to want to want to make sure that you do something differently. And she might have a couple more tricks up her sleeve. Wouldn't you think? Commotion in the hallway. It seems that the conferences are dwindling down, and as a result, the hallway is filled with parents finding their way out. It is suddenly quite loud. The parent who had been waiting in the doorway did not close the door behind them when they left. You feel that even getting up to close the door might be taken as a sign of neglect on your part by the parent you are meeting with, and so you maintain your composure and work to conclude the conference. So again, another what we call a nonlinear event, something else that just causes you a little bit more stress and a little bit more disruption, but that's the reality of being in these situations. And it's, a, it's just a, something inevitable is gonna happen like this. It's 8 p.m. and you realize that the parent is not satisfied with the conversation and seeking information and support beyond what you can provide. What will you do now? At 8 p.m., you thank the parent for coming and note that the time is up and conferences are ending for the night. Use a business-like tone and ask the parent to be in touch by email with any questions. Continue visiting with this parent beyond 8 p.m. Eventually, all the information prepared for the conference is shared with the parent. Ask the parent if it would be okay to pause the conference and meet again in a couple of days at the parent's convenience. Show the parent you are committed to their student. Suggest that there are issues at play here that are new to you. Another option, specify on next screen. On the next screen, note what elements of the options listed you would combine for a better decision or note any other approach you would take beyond the options listed. Okay, some real trade-offs here for the Thanks. teacher participant to think about. Um, I'm going to just rule out option one and option four, and let's just talk about two and three a little bit because I think I think again that the trade-offs are are in, in 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 these decisions. If you haven't, if the teacher hasn't figured it out, this is about them that are going to like option two. They're going to feel like the more they talk, the more information they give, they're going to be able to satisfy this parent. 
Well, I think we've started to see that's not going to happen. And they are going to try to make this happen in, you know, out in, at a different time, get some more information, let her calm down, get some help, those kinds of things. So that seems like the best of the situations here. But again, there's some trade-offs in play here. And frankly, I don't think it's going to matter. I think it's going to always end up not being the right decision. But let's go with number three. And that now you understand this is about you as the teacher and you just need to get by yourself some time. And this is the best way to buy yourself some time. There's no sense trying to talk this out anymore, or convince her that you were right and that she needs to see it from your point of view. So here's what happens. I came here tonight hoping that we could agree on what needs to change for my students' performance in your class to improve. And I'm frustrated that we haven't gotten there, but I am willing to put in the effort to meet again in a few days, though it would have to be in the evening again. Okay, so to give you a little hint again, if you watched it, if you watched the video again of the simulation again and chose option two, then she just stormed out of the meeting, met with the principal, principal comes back into your room and says, we're having a meeting in a few days. So you know what I'm saying? We get to the same point, but there's sure a better way to get there in this version, even though she's not happy about it, than her storming out of your meeting and going to your principal. And then, then we have a, you know, just a whole different set of scenario to play out. Parent is not happy. The parent states that they are dissatisfied and want to know what they have to do for their student to change teachers for this class and leaves to find the principal. The parent and principal meet in the hallway. The principal calls you over after the parent leaves and informs you that there will be a meeting tomorrow in the principal's office to follow up on the parent's concerns. As you look toward meeting with the principal to plan for the follow-up meeting with the student's parent, who would you want to attend and have input on the planning? Select up to four of the following options. You and the principal, counselor, one or more of the student's other teachers, someone else, specify on next screen. So to just show you how that works, you can, in this, in this box, you can check as many of the boxes that you want and you hit submit. Who else would you want to invite to the planning meeting? Um, this gives you a little bit of freedom to think about that in your particular school and your particular setting. Who else might you want to involve in this situation? Um, I'm going to just say my, I'm a first year teacher. I have a mentor teacher. Which of these options best describes the purpose of the meeting with the parent? Pick up to two of the following choices. To list the specific concerns from the parent and have specific answers for how to address them. To find the parent additional resources outside of school to help the student. To listen further to the parent and reassure them that their concerns have been heard, but in the end, the student is going to have to adapt to this teacher and the current circumstances. A different purpose, specify on next screen. Okay, let's have a poll. Let's find out what y'all think. What do you think the purpose of this meeting should be about? Few more seconds. Uh, number one was the most popular reason to have the meeting, but number three um, got a lot of got a lot of support too, and a few for for number four. In other words, have a different purpose. But again, I think this is something to help teachers understand going into meetings like this. What is our purpose? And the principal and the participants need to be on the same page. <laughs> need to have 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 an understanding of that. Um, in order to have a successful meeting, uh, particularly with this parent, I think it's going to be more important to have that conversation up front. So I'm just going to pick those two that were most talked about. 
and hit submit. You should call the parent to set up the follow-up meeting and then be in charge of leading the meeting. Why? Okay, Brian, would you do a breakout on this, please? Um, let's just have a little conversation about who should who should call the parent, the teacher, the principal, somebody else, and a little bit of discussion about why. Make the call. Who should make the call to the parent? What did your group discuss? Our group uh, said that it's the teacher that should do that, and she should own that meeting. She also should ask the parent to be prepared to provide some specifics as to not her accusations, but her comments as to why she felt that the student wasn't successful as a result of the instruction. In other words, like I said in my small group, put your money where your mouth is, lady. Uh, you need to, you know, share with me why you're saying these kinds of things. Did anybody have a different opinion that they would be willing to share? I, I feel like the principal needs to make the contact because the parent has already gone to them. And I, I don't think you're being supportive of the teacher uh, by saying, hey, you know what, the parent talked to me already, so now I need you to call the parent back. If the parent came to you, you can set up the meeting, but you can absolutely do it in, from a place of support of your teacher. Great, great corresponding uh, thought on that. Again, no right or wrong answer here, but it's just something that people should talk about as this unfolds. And, and everybody needs to be solid on what the rationale is and why we want to do it the way we want to do it. So I think those are both excellent points of view. So here we go. With the meeting with the parent schedule, you anticipate the parent sharing their misgivings about you as a teacher. You think about how listening and a willingness to consider input can help to build trust with this parent around your desire to support their student. Handled well, the meeting could provide an opportunity to build an alliance with the parent to support their student. You recognize that if the student continues in your class, you will need to heighten communication with the parent. The simulation storyline ends here. On the next screen, you will find a detailed feedback report for your choices and responses in the simulation. So here's what it starts to look like. Um, we have learning objectives for, for each section of the simulation, and then uh, which was mostly around the, the decision points. And then we had our choice, and we had the other choices, and then some feedback on that based on what your choice was. And so this is something you could produce to your principal if you were a teacher to say, I did the simulation, I want my credit, or um, just, to, just to have a further conversation, like we have people do this, and then let's come to a meeting and, and discuss it with a little bit more uh, purpose because we've already decided what was gonna happen. So that's how that looks. And then, From the simulation point of view, everybody, once you watch a simulation, you can give feedback on it and you can submit that. So a couple of follow-up questions. I'm gonna have to. Just a second. It's the January 23rd webinar, Dave, on the on your menu. Yeah, button. I can't see it on my screen. There you go. You got it. Okay, do we have it up? Yeah, just page down. I just go down one screen. Because I can oh here we go. Okay. So a little bit of follow-up then. Just for you to think about it and again, uh, first question, I'm just gonna have you jump jump on, uh, just jump right into the webinar and tell us what you think. If we had an extended timeline of this simulation, in other words, we went beyond what the last screen said and we had the meeting and we had this happen, where, where, where would you like us to take it? Well, what scene would you have liked to see next? For example, would you have liked to see a scene from the meeting or a scene from the next parent-teacher conference like in nine, Nine, nine weeks down the road, we have another conference where we have this parent and this teacher discuss. What do you think would be uh, 
um, something that you would predict that would be a good scene for us to see whether or not this parent and this teacher are going to get along. Anybody want to share a thought on that? I would love to see because the principal is also in that meeting supporting the teacher, but I would love to see them have some coaching like questions so they could really get to the bottom of it. Obviously that parent, even though she said she needed to meet in the evening, she chose to last 15 minute, minutes knowing that the meeting ended at eight o'clock. And so she wanted to be able to say what she had to say, knowing that the teacher wasn't gonna have enough time to truly respond to that. So I think that was a power move on her plate. So I would love to see them have the conversation and that, and then the teacher ask questions that, that brought them back around um, so that by the time they finished, the parent was thinking more about the student and really having a truer picture of what was going on in the classroom, as well as understanding truly where the parent was coming from. Obviously something is bothering the parent and right now it's the teacher, you know, she's putting it on the teacher, but it may not be the real problem. So I could, I would love to see the principal as well as the teacher being able to ask questions that led to what the real problem is. Thank you. Any other thoughts on extending the timeline and what you'd like to see? There's a bunch of things in chat. No, those are all great comments. I think the other point of the, the simulation is to point out the fact that, again, where does a beginning teacher learn how to handle these kind of conversations? How do you help a beginning teacher learn to say to, say to a parent and, and get the parent to really believe in that, that I hear you, I'm, I'm listening to you, but let's do it in a different way. Uh, there, there's just an experience with that, that that is the point of having simulations like this. It's to get, get people that practice and give people that experience before they actually have to do it. I think that's the benefit of having the follow-up conversation after the simulation yep. so that the group um, can share maybe ways that they had handled similar situations in the past. And, and not that one is right and one is wrong, but you know, just to be able to hear right. those, those comments is very useful. So what would you think if we wrote another simulation that was kind of part two to this and it was the parent teacher meeting? And we played all this out in a simulation based on the fact that we've seen what happened in the parent teacher conference. Now the parent, the teacher and the principal are gonna have a real coaching conversation. They're gonna have a more of an in-depth conversation about this. So it could be more of a leadership simulation or it could be more a teacher simulation again. Um, to have that conversation with the principal. Um, you can just put it in the chat. Do you think that'd be a worthy simulation for us to think about? Yeah, yeah, that point, one, one of the things that we also find in, in terms of, especially when you're dealing inside a building or inside a district, where you have the opportunity for the principal to actually be the one facilitating, mm -hmm. right? The, the, the principal leading the session with their teachers um, and where you get that opportunity for that dialogue to actually happen real time, right? What, what is the expectation that the principal has of the teacher, but what's the expectation that the teachers have of the principal? Uh, how, how are they gonna feel supported and an opportunity to get aligned in terms of as we have these nights of, of meetings or days and nights of meetings, what, how do I feel? Uh, how am I going to go into this knowing whether you have my back, whether you don't have my back, whether it's an open-ended question, whether you will have my back, but in terms of being able to, to have that opportunity to actually engage in a conversation where you've got a scenario in front of you without a student or a real parent on the other side, but to get that kind of alignment in terms of um, how one will approach, because obviously we can't predict exactly what's going to happen, but we want them to be thoughtful in terms of whatever response they're going to make in whatever situation they find themselves. 
Thanks, Sorry, I just wanted to add to that. I think that it's really important to have the principal shown as a resource, especially for new teachers, because they don't know that the principal can be a resource and a support and someone that they can lean on versus this is my supervisor. I don't want to be in trouble, but this could be a really important coachable moment for the new teacher around how to engage with this particular parent and to know that it's okay to ask for help and not go through a path by yourself and that the principal and your school leadership is there to support you. Thank you very like much. See, uh, some way that uh, an entry that uh, participants could write in what their expectations are, kind of a follow up to what was just said of what they expect in that meeting with the parent. What do they expect from the principal? Uh, so that, you know, the principal and the uh, teacher have to have some common entry point when they go into the meeting. So if there was a way in the simulation for the participants to actually write down what it is they expect to have happen in the meeting with the principal, what are their expectations? Kind of like what support they're gonna get from the what they're hoping to get from the principal. Something to that effect so they could write down their thoughts. Is that a possibility to add like a text oh, box or something into the I think it's a really good point. And it's part of the, I think the beauty of these simulations is that whether that was actually added, you know, specifically, when you when you do this in a group setting, that would be something to actually talk about and to put in context for people. And so it's just the jumping off point to have a lot more conversations that are around these same topics. Um, so yeah, I think that's, if we watched the simulation a second time and chose different things, I think we'd have different conversations. Yeah. So my last question to the group today is that, just think about how you could experience the simulation differently if some of the contexts were differently. For example, let's talk about some of the obvious ones. What if the parent was of color? What if the child, what well, if we knew the child's name? What if the parent was male, not a female? You know, what are those things that might cause the teacher or cause the, the context to be viewed perhaps differently than, than the way it was set up in this one? What are your biases, in other words? And what types of things might you have to consider in making some of these judgment calls at these decision points? Anybody have any feelings on those contexts? One of the other things that we look to as you're thinking about that, um, we look to uncover, and you noticed from one of the, the write-in um, screens, which actually asked about feelings. How are you feeling? And you know, part of the effort there is also to allow for this, um, for people to call out, right? Sometimes you walk into these meetings, you're tired, um, maybe you're stressed, you're afraid. Uh, it, it's something, this is maybe a parent that you've had a bad interaction with, I, obviously you haven't in this case, but maybe you just had a bad interaction. So your feelings, you're feeling defensive, you're feeling whatever it is that may be on the more negative side, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to respond in that way, right? So how can we find that space to pause where we don't necessarily react on our feelings? It could be biases to what Dave was asking about, right? So we may have a visceral reaction one way or another to um, the, the, the parent coming in or the parents coming in, whatever that situation is, or how we're made to feel by what uh, is happening in front of us. But the idea of being able to program in to create that space where no matter how I'm feeling, that my response is gonna have some thought behind it, right? Because we, we are programmed, we're to fight, right? If we get into fight flight uh, from an amygdala uh, hijack perspective, we may just react. And chances are, and we joke sometimes, right? When it comes to being a deer in the headlights, it rarely goes well for the deer. So how do we make you not that, right? How do we program in so that there is that pause, that space is created, um, so that we can actually take a breath and then thoughtfully or as thoughtfully as we can, but with some thought at least, respond. And that's the kind of thing that is difficult to teach. But if we can create spaces in which there are opportunities to have those experiences, then maybe we can create that muscle memory where there is a pause. 
there is an opportunity to be thoughtful and respond to the needs of the moment, not necessarily your feelings of the moment, which again, they're valid. We wanna recognize them. We wanna acknowledge them. And in fact, there's a lot of work. Uh, Brene Brown has done a lot of work relating to emotional granularity and being able to give an emotion a name, take away some of its power and, there, and then be able to, to step past it, uh, to step through it, if you will. And that's kind of the, the opportunity from a facilitation perspective with a role that we can play in terms of helping teachers in terms of whether we're a leader um, working with our staff, whether we're a faculty member, whether we're doing PD, whether we're a counselor, whatever the case may be, to engage in this manner so that we can have that, create those spaces in which better decisions can be made. We are near the top of the hour. We'd love to hear uh, questions, but before we open it up fully, just wanna let you all know that uh, if you go to the next screen, yep, we have an upcoming webinar uh, in a couple of weeks. Um, on dealing with implicit bias, uh, bias in the hiring process, um, which will be led by our uh, friend and colleague from Drake University, Trent Grunmeyer. Um, so that's gonna be coming up. So feel free to, uh, the, the announcements will come out to register for that. Also, again, please stay tuned for access to, for those of you interested in seeing the SIM that we started developing uh, during our last webinar relating to learning loss um, in the classroom. Um, that is going to be available over the next uh, 10 days or so uh, to get an opportunity for feedback so we can get some iterative process through with all of you. Because as you have seen, hopefully if you were on that webinar or you can see the recording at our website, the opportunity to unpack a problem of practice somewhat like what Dave was doing during the playing of the simulation, right? What are some of those underlying trade-offs that are at play and really being cognizant of what it is we're evaluating between when we're facing these decisions um, that that process is, is fun and developmental as well. So with that, we'd welcome any questions, comments that you have um, as we come closer to the top of the hour. But thank you, Dave, very much for a wonderful session. So we thank you um, and your participation. And again, uh, we're still willing to, to stick around for those of you who might have questions or comments and feel free to unmute and ask. I'd just like to say uh, thank you for this opportunity to participate in this uh, simulation that you're building out. I have personally used about three of your simulations in my graduate classes, and I have found them to be very beneficial in helping um, students who are prospective principals make decisions about you know, what is going to take place uh, given a situation. And I like the fact that the simulations that I used were actually aligned with the professional standards. So the students could see that um, their decisions are standards-based or to start to think about their decisions um, in the context of standards. So I found them to be very beneficial, uh, mostly within small groups and then analyzing the decisions and talking about the experiences people have had that are related to the actual simulation. So I found that to be beneficial and the students did um, respond that they had actually liked um, the ability to use them, use Thank the simulations. Thank you very much. I have a quick question. Um, I also have used actually um, three of these. Our division used three of them last year and they were very effective, um, brought some great conversation and, and, um, and all. So this year um, we were looking at, you know, ones we would like to use. And so I was actually previewing some through the eyes of using with new teachers and with a few, a couple of them that I looked at, some of the engagement was a little less than what some of them had been. Like the ones we had used, it had video and picture, but there was a, some of my head preview was just all words. It was, it was nothing. And I really liked the aspect of the video and all, because I, I feel like it helps the audience become actively involved in the simulation. Um, and then there was a couple that, like the volume of what was being read and the person talking was, one was really high and one was really low. So you were having to adjust the volume 
based on who was speaking. Um, so my question is, are some more of these simulations going to be developed, like especially for these new teachers that um, would be more of like what we saw today? And um, we did the ones last year with like difficult um, conversations. That was a really good one. Um, disruptive teacher and then the transgender one. And all of those were very much in line with each other. Well, thank you for the question. And yes, all of the new Sims, all of the Sims that we're bringing out now certainly are going to be of this format. Um, you know, some of the uh, Sims predate, you know, they, they're, the library is filled with things that we have developed um, from the beginning of, of the evolution of the, of the company. And we are going back and refreshing them um, and adding the, the, the both the video and evening out the, uh, you know, we had tried to add some things in over time, which obviously, as you've not seen, uh, so we're trying to fix those things. So I appreciate you pointing them out and actually offline, if you don't mind, you know, giving specifics, that would be great. Um, because we are trying to, obviously, the, the opportunity to, we like the important we believe in the importance of video versus like avatars because of the authenticity factor, right? So it's not my building and not my people, but they could be. So that's an important component. And so being able to add that in is key. Um, and so we, we hope to add to all of them, but you know, certainly any, all, anything new and anything from the last few years um, has had that combination of things. And we're gonna continue to add and refresh um, as we can. Okay, and is there a schedule of of what is going to be added, or if I don't know if I'm looking at the most recent or not um, list, like um, uh, what you know, what is coming up? So we did. Um, I think there was an email which we can resend to you to, at the uh, in December that went out with what's coming. We have a number of classroom management simulations that are going to be coming out. Great. Um, uh, from the teacher sims perspective, we have a couple of the counselor sims that will be coming out as well, one called Planning for Student Achievement and one relating to STEM. Um, we have uh, some leadership sims. We have the one on equity-centered leadership, uh, which we actually unveiled in December at the Learning Forward Conference, which will be made available. Uh, another equity-centered leadership that is in process with uh, Virginia State University um, and others. So the, uh, we have uh, a, a pretty robust development calendar and we'll, there, we'll make, that, make that available in terms of prospective timing um, so that uh, you can get a sense of what's coming over the course of the year. Great, thank you very much, I appreciate that. You're welcome, thank you. Any other thoughts? All right. Well, thank you all. And I think at this point, we will um, hope to see you next month um, at the upcoming webinar. And if you have questions, please feel free to reach out. And we look forward to uh, being in touch.